Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joseph Sangle, and I want to be the first to welcome you to the month of June. Woo-woo. Woo-hoo. It is June what? Six. June 6th. Do you know what happens tomorrow? It's June 7th. Yes. Do you know what happened 25 years ago on June 7th? It's your anniversary. It's me and Jennifer Lynn Nijakowski's 25th wedding anniversary. And so, to the love of my life, happy anniversary. And we were supposed to be on a Mediterranean cruise. But, you know, things are a little wild. Yeah. A little weird. So, we're planning to do our 25th wedding anniversary cruise on our 26th anniversary. There you go. So right now, we're planning a trip up to New England. That's what we're going to do. And it's going to be delayed. Uh, it's going to be delayed. It's going to be delayed here a few months. We're still working on the child care issue. Oh, okay. uh, but here's what I know. Uh, June 6th. It's June. Can you believe it? Uh, we're headed. We're in the middle of summer in South Carolina. And uh, we're soon to enter into the special season. It's the fifth season that we have. We have five seasons in South Carolina. The fifth season is known as Inferno. We have a um, lot of seasons, I feel yeah, like. It's very amazing. So tell everybody, what we're, are you doing good? Yeah. This could perhaps be the last episode of the podcast that you record prior for while, to exiting yeah. for maternity leave for could those be. twins. And so it's exciting that we got to June 6th. Yeah. Pretty good. In my head, I feel like I'm going to be pregnant forever. Mm, that's not going to be the case. I know it won't. It's not the case, but I feel like they're never <laughs> coming out. <laughs> I'm so, ready. <laughs> uh, in this, this probably the last episode, uh, we wish you well. Thank you. And we're going to have some special episodes coming up behind this. They will that be special. They're going to be really cool. Very special. Some unique things. We're going to try some things. So I hope the listeners give me grace. Why are you You're giggling till you're snorting. I think no, that- No, we just had a planning meeting the yeah. other day and it's just- They're just going to be odd and they're going to be- de- It's going to be Just great. different. It'll just make, different. Hopefully it will make you- But it's going to make everybody so glad when you come back. <laughs> and uh, that's great. So tell everybody what we're going to talk about in this, All right. this episode. Episode two. Episode number- 205. 205. Oh, I was like, I thought you were going to say 206. I was like, that's not right. No, 205. Okay. So this, we're doing a this or that series. So save or invest. So our question for this is, I'm expecting a bonus at the end of the financial year. How do I decide if I should save it? Or invest it. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> and I love this. I love these series that we're doing throughout this year. And the this or that series I, is probably my favorite, you know, because it is a this or that. And so we basically compare and contrast. I kind of like it. Uh, it's kind of like the NCAA basketball tournament where you're saying this team versus this team and then this decision versus this decision. And I, I like that. It's kind of if some people choose their favorite team based on their color or by their mascot. Right. <laughs> Maybe that's a way to do that, but we're going to try to do it with some helpful financial information. So this or that, should I save this money or should I invest this money? We'll get to that. But first, we're going to go to one of those favorite, most looked forward to, anticipated section of the podcast. You know what time it is, so let's do it. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip Podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully funded life, courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. All right. Today's carbon money event section. I'm talking. You are talking. About me and Jen's 25th wedding anniversary. Yes. Since it is right now relevant. And I'm going to share five money lessons that we've learned. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Number one, these, these are from a couple that has been blissfully married with no arguments ever. 
<laughs> or intense fellowship, intense as fellowship. you you and yes. Jordan call it. I like it. Which everybody knows I'm being facetious. Anybody who's been married 25 years knows that you've had some wonderful conversations through the years. We've made great progress uh, in our life and in our money. And these are five money lessons we learned we wanted to share with you. Number one, a saver helps ensure you show up at retirement with some money. Mm. But the spender makes sure you have fun getting there. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm the spender. My wife is the saver. Jen is the saver. She has ensured that we're showing up at retirement. She, she, she has been very helpful. I remember one key moment that I want to share. Uh, we bought, we built this new house out on this 11 acres outside of town. And I'm, I'm overwhelmed because my builder went over on the budget. Have you ever Shocking. heard of this? So they went over and I didn't know how over they were until we got all done and they said, congratulations, here's the overages, write us a check. And it was only 4% over, which sounds, oh, only 4%, not bad. But when you're building a house, 4% of any amount of building a house is a lot, a lot. especially when you've, you've got to buy curtains and furniture and towels. And it's, it's just crazy. And so I've got this stress moment. And so I have decided that I want to have a nice lawn and I'm going to mow about three acres of this property. So I'm out mowing it with a push mower <laughs> in the middle of the season of Inferno. And my bride is like, she finally came out, the saver came out and said, Joseph, if we go buy this John Deere ZTR mower, is it going to affect our ability to retire? And I thought about it and I said, no. And she said, I think you're push mowing the lawn in the middle of Inferno mm -hmm. is going to affect your ability to get to retirement. <laughs> so go buy the mower. And it was a great moment because the saver helped bring the spender out of me in a, in a wise thought process. Mm -hmm. And so just we, we work together on this stuff. And I think it's very helpful. <laughs> Number two money lesson that we learned is that a budget is your friend, not your enemy. Mm -hmm. It's not the enemy of each other that you collect. Collaborate on it together, and off you go. And so every single month, without fail, since July of 2003, Jen and I have prepared a budget. We get on Microsoft Excel, type in those numbers, let it do the math for us. We get to make the decisions. We make it income minus outgo equal. Exactly zero. Trademark. And it is our friend. Number three lesson that we learned is that saying no right now, it does not mean no forever. We said no for a while, and then we were able to say yes to buying the land. We said no for a little while, and then we were able to say yes to let's build the house. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We said no for a long time on replacing my truck. Mm -hmm. my, tr my old truck is 25 years old. 25. So we finally replaced it this year, 25 mm -hmm. years later. Isn't that amazing? It still runs, though. It still runs. It won't stop running, so I've got to keep it. I barely touched the key in that old 1997 GMC 1500 with the world's worst underpowered V6 engine. Just keep starting. But saying no right now does not mean no forever, and that is very helpful. And the longer that we've been married, the longer we remember that, the better we remember that. It doesn't make it easy to say no. We're still humans. But saying no helps us. And because we know that eventually we'll get to say yes to a dream. The fourth thing is that children are crazy expensive. It's true. That is true. You're getting ready to double that up, but they're worth it. And there's nothing better to spend money on even when my son is breaking another thing and he loves breaking things. <laughs> and when my daughter is out, you know, you know, my, my little daughter, I love her so much. She's eight. And she, she, uh, I noticed we had a bunch of people over, a bunch of kids were over. I think we had a Boy Scout party, but all the families were invited and there were kids running everywhere. There must've been 30 kids at our house and they're running in and out and everything. All of a sudden I'm outside and I see kids pouring out of my daughter's window, like jumping out of the house. Now, now this is the first floor. Not the second floor, it's the first floor. And they're jumping out. A lot more alarming. And I'm like, this floor. is really unique because there's a screen and I don't know where the screen is. And I walked up and my daughter had been being chased by boys and the girls were trying to get away. And my daughter realized the screen was in the way. So she figured out a way to fix this problem. She just got scissors and cut a big hole in the screen. <laughs> and she was so proud of herself for figuring this out. And so, yep. So they're, they're crazy expensive. <laughs> But they're worth it. Hey, a screen is not as bad as 
What, Keaton threw a fire truck at a TV or something? Yeah, he broke my plasma TV the end. Yeah. He's done many things that cost hundreds and thousands of dollars. Okay? And the fifth thing is that love is the great stabilizer in life. Aww. That when life is crazy, having that person, your beloved, with you, right? That Having those conversations with Jordan... Our, our producer, you know, Caroline, talking with Sean, right? For me, with Jen, being able to know you have somebody in your corner mm -hmm. at all times is huge. Like, you can be in the middle of a knockdown drag out when you leave, and you come home and talk about something that happened that was, you know, they feel like somebody said something wrong about their, all of a sudden they are in your corner. The fight, we can pause that. We're going to fight about that later. But right now, I'm going to go fight. Who said that? Right? Yep. That's a great stabilizer of life. And I think it's great. It's just a great thing. Yep. And so those are five money lessons that we've learned. That's, That's it great. for today's romantic 25th wedding anniversary lessons that we've learned. One other thing, I remember when my parents had their 25th wedding anniversary, they were a thousand years old. They were very old, but I am very young. It's really weird how that works out. Yep. All right. Today's success story. I always have a hard time with that. Today's success story comes from Stephanie, who just one month after attending a financial learning experience is already feeling more freedom and peace with her finances. She said, my biggest financial win has been taking action to cut the fat out of my budget and take a look at necessary versus unnecessary spending. I actually had $300, actually had over $300 left in my checking account at the end of the pay cycle when before it would come down to the wire and I'd be dreading potential overdraft charges. It's very freeing to have to, it's very freeing to not have to live in fear. The biggest challenge has been getting to handle of the monthly spending, it was shocking to see how much money I was spending every month once it got down to, on paper. It caused me anxiety but gave me a sense of encouragement that I don't have to let my finances control me if I can take the time to tell my money what to do. This is unbelievable. There's so many things that come to mind, and I can hear the power coming back up in the podcast because this podcast is powered by our listeners' success. And Stephanie, uh, she put together a budget and she's had extra money. She found margin. Uh, she used some very, you know, compelling phrases. She cut out the fat. That sounds, sounds very, very serious. Um, but, but I heard words like fear and anxiety. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. But I also heard encouragement. So I wanted to share this. Um, I, I read uh, a noted researcher, a psychologist, who was doing a lot of psychology experimentation and they were speaking to the fact that we have anxiety about facing a situation, right? We all, have, uh, whatever the situation, we from time to time face anxiety. But the big challenge is that if we're having anxiety and we run from that anxiety, it doesn't address the problem. In fact, in many cases, that issue continues to grow and the anxiousness continues to grow. The example, and they were looking at the psychology of money. We know that we have debt. We know we should address it. We have anxiety addressing it. So we choose not to. We choose, we, instead, we choose to do things that make us feel good, that release the right chemicals in our brain that, you know, I'm going to binge watch my favorite show on Netflix. I'm going to go do this thing with my kids. But the whole time, that problem is not being addressed. In fact, many times it festers in a negative manner so that we continue to have building anxiety. So what the psychologist was speaking to is how do we get coping mechanisms as humans to build the ability, the emotional stability to address the anxiety head on, walk into it, address it, because as you face anxiety and you face it down and you have a win, encouragement comes on the back end. So that's what Stephanie did. And so I think that psychologist's name was Gail Matthews, I think. And if so, maybe we, I can send you a link to that article and we can have it linked in the show notes. I found it very fascinating, this real research that has been done, vetted out research on facing anxieties. Very, very, very important. Uh, and it allows her to tell her money what to do. Why wouldn't we all want to do that? So overcome the anxiety, overcome the fear, face it down. And then that thing that used to bring anxiety because you have experience with it, you know that you've beat it in the past, it becomes not a thing anymore. Hmm. Excellent, Stephanie. Fired up. 
All right. So our question for today is, I'm expecting the bonus at the end of the financial year. How do I decide? Yeah, seriously. Is this you? (laughs) Maybe. Um, How do I decide if I should save it or invest it? Okay. That's awesome. This or that. This or that. Save it, invest it. So I would love to hear from our listeners first. What what do you think they should do? Should they save it? Should they invest it? Now, now we know that saving and investing are two different activities. So let's just sum it up. Uh, saving is for safekeeping. It's not there for growth. It's there for, for safekeeping for emergencies, for known upcoming expenses, right? That, that rung number two, one month's worth of expenses, or if you're on rung number five, a minimum of three months of expenses. Investing has risk, but it's in hopes of growth. Hmm. Okay. So I wanted to show that. So what are the questions that we can ask to help them answer yep. the question, this or that? Save it or invest it. Yep. So the first one is, where are you on the fully funded life ladder? Yeah, that's exactly uh, like, that's a great question. (laughs) Where are you on the fully funded life ladder? We have a link to it in the show notes. You can download this ladder in fully funded life. When you join that, that's the first lesson you get. You Mm -hmm. just get it because we want to make sure that you have a roadmap to live your fully funded life. And it starts by, by writing out your plans, hopes, and dreams your PhDs, and then building margin. So if you don't have a month's worth of money saved up, that's the first thing you should do with this money. If you do, uh, then potentially, if you haven't done rung three, which is to invest at least a month, uh, you know, $100 a month or enough to get the company match, you need to do that. That's a step. If you've already achieved rung five, which is a minimum of three months worth of expenses, it sounds like it's invested, maybe even use it to pay off your house. Mm-hmm. So, so that's really huge. So uh, maybe we can put the ladder up here on the screen, just show it so you can see the ladder really quick. Maybe you pause it if you're watching it on YouTube, kind of look at it and see where you're at on the ladder. Have you skipped any rungs on the ladder? And let the ladder guide your decision making. That's why we provide the ladder is people all the time are asking, what should I do? What's my next step? Do I need to save this? Do I need to invest it? The ladder answers the question. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we've created this ladder to be super easy resource for you to follow. It's been tested and it works. So if you follow it, you'll be able to make significant progress towards your fully funded life. Right. Like you're talking about. So the next one, number two is, um, use the, I was broke. Now I'm not mini budget tool. Yes. I love the mini budget tool. And the reason it's really important is the this or that, should I save it or invest it? But a lot of people that are getting bonus money, well, they want to have a little bit of fun with it. (laughs) And that is perfectly okay. Or they want to buy an item that they've wanted to buy. It's kind of a reward. If a bonus is a reward, it would be very helpful to the human nature to reward yourself with it too. So we encourage you to prepare a mini budget for found money, this abnormal, not normal money to Put a separate budget. Don't put it in your normal budget. Put it in a separate budget. And our mini budget tool, which you can download at IWasBrokenNimeNot.com slash tools, uh, or you can get it through Fully Funded Life platform. Uh, It allows you to prepare three budgets. Mm -hmm. And the three budgets are important because we want you to really force yourself to think about alternative ways you could spend the money. If you like economics, we would call this the opportunity cost of your money. You're exploring what the opportunity costs are which is the next best use of the money. Because, Megan, you know this, I know this, many of our listeners know this, when we have money coming our way, unusual, unplanned, found money, like a bonus, we run in our brains to what's most urgent, what's most top of mind. But it's not always the best or maximizing use of the money. It's what's most urgent. And the mini budget forces us to think about, hey, Let's write down what's most urgent, the way I immediately think of how we could use it. But then let's think about two other ways we could use it. Uh, so recently, um, I had an apartment. I, I, I'm an owner, uh, a business partner in some apartment complexes. And these apartment complexes have performed well. And so at the end of the year, the members of the ownership group voted to have a special distribution. And, and, and I voted yes. <laughs> and so we had found money. So we planned it out. And my immediate thing that I wanted to do, which is really weird as a spender, is I wanted to put it in savings. Okay. My bride said, 
I would like to have outdoor furniture for our back porch. Well, that was an alternative use of the money. So we put together the budget, the mini budget, and spent it these three different ways. And we now have back porch furniture (laughs) because because she appropriately pointed out that we had rung five savings. Mm -hmm. What would it really benefit to have that? And yesterday I came home and, you know, it took a while to get here because of inflation and because of also backed up supply chain stuff. But it's, it's now there. It's delivered. And our little daughter had came home from school. It was glorious weather. We're recording this in, in April, uh, even though it's releasing June 6th. And our little daughter had crawled out there with a little blanket and was asleep on the couch. No. And last week we had a cousin there, uh, my kid's cousin, and he's like the same age as my little daughter. And he's out asleep on the exact same couch laying the opposite direction. And my dog had climbed up and had curled up at his feet. And he was having his feet warmed up with that. And my wife sent a picture of that as if it was good. <laughs> like my dog on the furniture, which is unbelievable because it is proof. Even though Jen won't admit it, she loves she the dog. Loves a dog. Mm-hmm. She won't admit it to anyone, but she loves the dog. <laughs> so the mi- mini budget, really important. Yep. So why would someone, we do have a little bit, but why would someone want to spend this money multiple ways on paper first? Just to summarize it, because we tend to run to what's most urgent and top of mind. Yep. Every one of us does it. We're all humans. Mm -hmm. And it forces us to think about alternative uses of the money. And most when I help people with this, they're getting a tax refund. They're getting a bonus. It is very rare that they end up using the money with what first came to mind. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a powerful tool. Except with Jen. Except for with Jen. (laughs) You know, I thought about saving it. She thought about. But her first thought. was Yeah, her first thought, which. Because she's My thoughts are not your thoughts. Declares my bride. Because she knew she's just so smart. Yep, she's so smart. All right, number three is remember the five year rule. Right. And so the five year rule is really important. So I just tell people all the time if you've listened to this podcast for any period of time, if you're part of fully funded life, you better know this. Mm -hmm. And that is maybe you could share the five year rule. Do you want to share the five year rule? So if you need the money within five years, it should be in savings. Yes. If you don't need the money in five years, it should you should invest it. That's right. And the reason being, this is a math thing. Mm -hmm. And it's based on past performance, although past performance is not an indicative future performance, may have investment, may lose money. That's a Securities Exchange Commission statement. That the, anybody who's a member of SIPC and all that stuff says, you know, you have to say this. I'm not a member of that stuff. I'm not a registered <laughs> investment advisor. I am a consumer advocate. But here's what I would say. I like math and I like trends. And if you choose any five-year period of the market, like the stock market, any five-year period of the real estate market, about 95 to 97% of those periods, any five-year period starting date change to five years later, Ninety-seven percent or so of those have made money, and so three percent of not, three to five percent of not. I'll take that my gamble with that. So that's why I chose five years. And I tell everybody, you can choose another number of years. You can choose two years, three years, seven years, whatever it is. But it, I like five years based on that math. And so if I don't need it in the next five years, I'm going to invest it. It's got to because inflation is going to erode the power of my dollar to buy things. And so I want to at least keep pace with inflation. The longer the window is that I don't need the money, the more risk I'm willing to take with it. Mm -hmm. So if it's till retirement, well, I'm definitely going to find tax advantage ways to invest it and put some risk with it. Mm -hmm. All right. Our quote for today is always plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. That's funny. Who said that? Richard. Who is he? I don't know. Richard Cushing. So you can look him up. I'm sure there's a Wikipedia page for him, but it's a good statement. Always plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. <laughs> That's real good. So he had he had a he had a word from the Lord. So that that, that could be another episode. Make sure you have a word from the Lord That's if you're going to do something really wackadoodle like build a ginormous ark. Have you been to the ark? No, I want to go in Kentucky. Though. Listen, if it starts raining a lot, we need to head to Kentucky. <laughs> I've been there. It's absolutely phenomenal. And it really caused me to question, appropriately question, the story of Noah and the Ark at another level. Hmm. Like, for real. Like, they, they're, you know, the conversation about dinosaurs. Did he have dinosaurs on there? Did he have a male and a female dinosaur? Well, dinosaurs were meat eaters. So was he feeding them other animals? 
Well, then you but had then to bring said, more. The baby animals did not necessarily eat meat. They could eat vegetables, and they have vegetable gardens growing in there. And I mean, it is it is challenging. And he explains like, hey, if you look at like uh, antelope or buffalo in the America, there's like five different versions of them, but there's only one now. And it's like, hey, he chose one subtype, one subspecies. I mean, it, 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 they, they really have thought through the science of this and the questions and really, it is, and it is ginormous. Mm-hmm. And they build it their, to their best ability to that thing, and they believe it would float. Isn't that crazy? That's Has no sail. It just, it just, I guess, float around and be whipped, and it's just really amazing. I encourage you to go see it. I think it's in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Hmm. Awesome. So tell everybody what we're going to talk about in the next episode. All right. Next episode, we're going to do another this or that series. We're going to talk about should you buy or rent? Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Should you buy it? Should you rent it? That can apply to cars. It can apply houses. to houses. It can apply to medical devices. Very good. Awesome. So if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who could benefit. You can do it by quickly rating the podcast, leaving a review. These rating and reviews help other people discover the podcast and help us make it better. If you've implemented one of our tips, please, please, please share your success story with us. You can email it to us at info at IWBNIN.com. That's I-N-F-O at IWBNIN.com. If you're watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button and leave a comment. Uh, you know, when you're looking at the comment, you know, what are some money lessons you've learned in your years of marriage if you're married and... If you were on this or this or that, what have you done with your bonuses that you feel like have been really effective? So, hey, until next Monday, have a great week and prosper. Live your fully funded life. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.